Hey guys, in this video, I have the iRangeX IRX1 multi-protocol module. It's a simple serial module using just the NRF24 L01 Plus RF chip that will fit into transmitter radios with uh, JR Bay that run a firmware that support it natively. It's just a serial version of this module, which is uh, PPM, but in a much nicer case. If you've seen my review of the IRX4 Plus, which is a 4-in-1 module that has the CC2500, A7105, CYRF6936, and the NRF24 L01 Plus chips. Think of the IRX1 as just a lower cost single module version with only the NRF24 chip. Where the IRX4 will support more protocols and models, the IRX1 will only have the protocols that use the NRF24 chip. Also included in the box are some headers and some jumpers if you plan on updating the firmware on this uh, module itself. There's also a piece of paper that has some instructions as well as the protocols that it supports. And the module is very simple. You just attach the antenna onto it. And I'm actually very impressed with the construction of the uh, actual um, enclosure. It's very sturdy and it doesn't really feel cheap at all. And it's really high quality, just like the IRX4. If you already have one of the 4-in-1 modules like the IRX4 Plus, you probably don't need the IRX1. Like I mentioned, the IRX1 module runs in serial mode, unlike other single chip modules which run in PPM mode, which means you'll need firmware that will support it. In my case, I'm using OpenTX, which will work with it. This should work with the FR Sky Tyrannus and the Turnigy 9XR Pro, as long as, the, as long as they run firmware that has multi-module compiled in. So in this video, I'll show you how to download and install OpenTX with multi-module support and set up a simple four-channel configuration and also bind it with the quadcopter. To update your transmitter to the latest version of OpenTX, the first thing we need to do is download OpenTX Companion, which allows you to download OpenTX firmware. Click on the latest version and it'll bring you to the release notes. Scroll down to the bottom and download the SD card contents, which contains all the necessary files for your SD card. Next, you want to download OpenTX Companion for your operating system. I'm going to download the Windows version, but they also have Linux and Mac available as well. Decompress the SD card contents, and then what you want to do is copy them to your micro SD card. Next, you want to install OpenTX Companion by launching the executable. Click next, 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 and then run through the installation. It should take a couple of minutes. And then once it has finished, what you can do is hit the finish button to launch OpenTX Companion. You may get this error about not being able to update. Click OK for now. First thing we need to do is create a new radio profile. So go into the settings section, radio profiles, add radio profile. And this is where we're going to create a new radio profile for your transmitter. So I'm going to create one for the Tyrannus QX7. You can create one for the QX7S or whatever radio you want. But you want to make sure you have the right radio type selected. And next you want to make sure that multi-module is selected as well in the build options. If you don't do this, your multi-module will not work. So make sure you check that off. And for the other settings, you want to make sure you have mode 2 and default channel order is AETR and have that selected. I also have a pen version number to firmware file name and then click OK. And after creating the radio profile, we can start to download OpenTX for your transmitter. So click the download button at the top and uh, make sure everything is correct and then click download firmware. Now, if you get this error message, it's actually very easy to fix. So what you have to do is go into your settings, click settings, click settings again, and then what you want to do is click the Applications tab. And right there, you'll see an option to enable uh, OpenTX nightly builds. After enabling those options, you should be able to download it again. So go back to the main screen and then hit Download. And then click Download Firmware. And it should pop up asking you where you want to save it. And the error message should be gone. And after it finishes downloading, you want to copy this to your micro SD card. Insert the micro SD card with the latest firmware file. To start the flashing process, 
push in the trim buttons while turning on the transmitter and then you'll get the option to write firmware. Select that option by using the dial and then pushing down on it and then you want to select the right firmware so make sure you have the firmware for your X7 and not the other one or else bad things could happen. So double check that you have the right bin file and then select it with the button by pressing it down and once you do that there should be a prompt that says hold ENT to start so hold that button down for a few seconds and it should start writing and this should be pretty quick. So after it's done writing the new firmware what you want to do is hit that button again and then go exit and if everything was done correctly it should boot up in OpenTX and press any key to continue. So now what we're going to do is check to make sure that it does have the latest version or the version that we did flash. So hold down the center menu button on the left and then you want to hit the page button on the left until you get to version and this is where you can check that you have the, um, the version that you flashed. Now we need to set the default channel order so uh, go to radio setup and then go all the way to the bottom and keep on turning the dial. It should be near the bottom and this is where you can set the uh, default channel order as well as your mode. So in my case I have AETR and mode 2. So I'm going to quickly install it into my Tyrannus. This is the uh, FR Sky Tyrannus uh, 9XD Plus. Currently I have the iRangex IRX4 Plus module installed and you can tell by that dial here that's where you do protocol selection in PPM mode and this is the one that has the 4RF chips. So we're going to remove that and put in the IRX1 which is a single chip uh, module and here you can see them side by side and the quality of the enclosure is identical to the more expensive IRX4 and uh, except it's missing obviously three other chips. So I'm going to plug it in and it just snaps in super easy and that's it. That's how you install these modules. It's super easy to do. So now I'm going to show you how to set up a new model in this uh, transmitter using OpenTX. So what you want to do is hit the menu button and this will bring you to the model selection screen. Next you want to select an empty slot and then hit enter and create model. And we're not going to use the wizard so I'm going to hit the exit button and we're going to create one from scratch. So hit page and give your model a name. I'm just going to temporarily give it like AAA and next thing you want to do if you want you can select a different model image. Uh, I'm going to use the 1000A because I am trying to bind that with the JJRC 1000A and you want to scroll all the way down until you see the internal module and external module and this is where you want to disable the internal module so I'm going to do that now by uh, turning it off um, and now go down to external module and we want to enable that so put it to MULT and next is uh, protocol selection so even though you can select these other various protocols they aren't the chips themselves aren't physically in the uh, in module so they won't work so the V2X2 protocol is supported so that's what I'm going to select and that's the one that's the protocol as used by the JJRC 1000A and that's pretty much it I also enable uh, bind on power up uh, for auto bind after the model configuration we can start binding the model to the transmitter and what you need to do now is to uh, plug up the battery first of all we'll go to the to the bind page for this model and we're going to go here and plug the battery up to the, um, the quadcopter and it should start blinking and then what you need to do is hit enter and the transmitter will start beeping and once the lights are steady or when they turn off like that that's when you know that it is bound and hit exit and then you can move the throttle stick up and down. The IRX1 isn't an upgrade to the IRX4 so if you already have the IRX4 or 4 plus you won't need it. However, if you don't have a multi-protocol module yet and only fly a handful of protocols supported by the NRF chip, it could be an option. So the IRX1 is a simpler, you know, multi-protocol module with only one RF chip, like I mentioned, which brings the cost down if you only fly like a small set of supported protocols. The IRX4 is the more full-featured option if you need to support many more protocols. 
I do like how there's so many options now, but it does get a little bit confusing. So hopefully this video clears it up a bit. Check out my other videos on the multi-protocol modules. I've done a number of them already. And I'll have links to everything I mentioned in the description, like links to the item and, and the manual, etc. So that's it for this video. Um, comment, like, share, or subscribe, and I'll see you next time.